When you buy a piece of equipment, whether it be second-hand or new, the chances are the manual that comes with it will have some technical data, usually at the end, and it'll give you some performance figures for that particular device. One of these is frequency response. You think, well, what's that then? Well, it's how well it responds to all frequencies, all sounds from 20 hertz, 20 cycles per second, which is very, very low bass, to 20 kilohertz, which is the highest treble that the human ear can actually pick up. Now, along the way, of course, there are going to be little lumps and bumps. So we've got to look for other figures to go with that frequency response chart. Let's go in a bit further. I have here then the manual for my Revox tape machine, my reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from about 1973. And it gives some fairly comprehensive information about how well it performs. And on your picture at the moment, you can see that it, there's a frequency response here. Frequency response via tape. Of course, we need to know how the tape machine performs itself. And it gives these figures, 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz, plus 2 slash minus 3 dB. What does that mean then? Well, it means that the tape machine will respond to and reproduce frequencies between 30 and 20,000 hertz. But there's a bit of few lumps and bumps along the way. So it'll be between plus 2 and minus 3 dB with, with respect to the 0 dB line. So that means that the frequency response will climb to 2 2 dB above zero and then dip to 3 dB below at some stage during that frequency response. You, are, you don't really get the um, any sort of deficiencies or any more information than that. I'll show you something else in a minute where you do. However, below that it says that between 50 hertz and 15 kilohertz it will respond to plus and minus one and a half decibels, which is actually not too bad. That's quite good. Basically, that means that frequencies outside 50 to 15, so that means the 30 to 50 bit right at the bottom, and then the 15 to 20 kilohertz, that's where the lumps are going to be, and that's where you're going to have a bit more. Now, this one says at 7.5 inches per second. Actually, my machine has been modified to run at 15 inches, so actually the figures will be much, much better than they are shown here. The faster the tape speed, the better the frequency response, and also the less variation you get along its length, apart from the bass. It's a bit weird with faster tape speeds and bass with the head. You get some sort of effects there. So that's the Revox. Now I've, I'm speaking to you at the moment on an AKG C414. I'm actually speaking to you on serial number V12738216836. So they produce a frequency response chart for every microphone. Now that's, that's basically, that's really what you would want. You want to know how your individual microphone is going to perform. And actually, the better the mic, the more expensive the mic, generally speaking, you get a chart provided. Now, on the, as you can see on the screen, there are five different colours here, five different frequency response charts. Here, or which, what am I looking at? Well, actually, you're looking at the five different pickup patterns, the polar pickup patterns that the mic can pick up. At the moment, we are on cardioid. Now, a lot of this also depends on the axis of the mic. This is on axis, so you're speaking straight into the microphone. Of course, it will respond differently wherever you are in terms of distance and that sort of thing. Now, the um, it even give a, gives a date of measuring as well. February the 19th, 2019. Hmm. So the orange line in the middle is the cardioid pickup pattern. So we've got frequencies all the way from 20 to 20,000 hertz or 20k. And then between those frequencies, we can see where the lumps are, where the bumps are in the, in the road. And as you can see, the cardioid one is pretty good. There's a, a natural sort of, there's a bit of a presence boost at the top. These are quite, uh, they've got some pretty uh, sort of clear top end. There are two different models of the C414s, the XLS as well, which is actually slightly less trebly at the top here. But of course, you know, th these graphs are only good if you're listening out for things. What we really need is, well, ideally, is for this to be completely flat, but that's not how it works. That's not how microphones and speakers work. There is always going to be 
coloration with that. And that's what coloration of the sound means, when the frequency response of the signal going in is different to that that comes out the other end. And of course, every piece of kit that you have in the chain will affect the frequency response. So as long as your front end, the mic and the audio interface are good, I mean, I've got a universal audio interface here, which is actually very, very flat across its frequency range. Now, this, the Coles, um, oh, just knock a guitar over. This is the Coles 4038 ribbon mic here. And actually, its response tails off uh, at, at about 15 kilohertz. Um, so it, it's actually slightly less trebly, but for various instruments, including the violin, I bought this because it makes my violin sound like a violin. I actually, the, the fact that it doesn't pick up all of that breathiness is actually an agreeable solution to recording something like a violin where you don't want all the bow noise and all of that stuff. You just get the notes and the, the harmonic balance of the strings. So it's very important to, to note that frequency response should never just be given as two frequencies. Frequency response, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It doesn't really mean anything. Yes, it means that it will pick up those two frequencies, but it doesn't mean that it's going to be flat between one and the other. It could do this, it could do all sorts of things. So it's very important to, to know the decibels, and the decibel range that uh, your frequency response operates at. So anything more than three or four decibels across the range means it's going to be quite noticeable in coloration. I've got an old power amp, a Crown PSA2, whose uh, frequency response is actually pretty flat within almost a decibel. So actually, that's really, really good. And I've got the individual chart for that as well. So it's, it's important. Yes, it is important. But when we're plugging mics into mixing desks where there might be an EQ section or there might be some coloration of those um, amplifiers inside there. We, we shouldn't get too hung up on this, but it's useful to know this information, especially if you've got something like a tape recorder that obviously you need to make sure will record everything that you throw at it and play it back.